Ross O'Brien with the Economist Corporate Network. I'm uh, here with Bjorn Engelhardt of Symantec, Sophia Lai of Groupon Hong Kong. We've just wrapped up our Asian intelligence update where we had a discussion about the future of digital commerce in Asia. Sophia, you had uh, mentioned uh, quite a surprising and, and, and well, amazing statistic to me. 2.4 million people have, uh, have signed up to use right. Groupon services in, in Hong Kong. Right. Tell me a little bit about how the, the experience um, in Hong Kong has perhaps been different to what you've established as, uh, as uh, a customer experience in the U.S. Okay, so in Hong Kong, um, we found that customers are much more prefer to have a physical brand presence. So when they shop with us, it's always better to be able to see the product before they buy it, pick it up at a really convenient locations. So with that said, then we just recently launched a Groupon concept store, which is just in Causeway Bay, and it actually helps users to enhance their shopping experience and also build our stuff as a more trusted brand that they can shop with us comfortably. And are, are the, uh, the 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 products and services that you're uh, offering is there, are there are they largely similar to um, the the set that you have in um, the U.S. or elsewhere, or is there a is there a particular Hong Kong slash Asian flavor to what products and services consumers are are looking for you to provide here? So in Hong Kong, um, the products that we offer are pretty much similar to what the U.S. market is, but mm -hmm. we also have a premium product sector, because in Hong Kong, a lot of shopper loves designer purses, whatnot, and with that said, then we also launch a new product category called a uh, Groupon Premium, which okay. we provide all these like designer purses for users to shop. Now, Bjorn, uh, to sort of build on that, um, both in terms of uh, the, the notion of a, of a, um, a concept store and um, kind of a push into premium um, products, do you feel that there is uh, a different sense of, of trust in the Asian consumer and their relationship with, with brands and shopping experiences online, or are we just simply at a different stage in e-commerce's development in the region. Uh, so I think we did talk about this morning that there is a, the trust is always the important part, Ross, when you're uh, looking at online transactions. And uh, you know, we hear from our consumers, we hear from our uh, our business partners that we're working with that uh, uh, they're always looking at to increase the trust between themselves and the consumers. And we're seeing that the level of transactions is still relatively small, the size of the transactions versus uh, the potential where it could be you know, once that increased confidence in buying from online stores or presence takes place. Right. Now, um, broadly, Bjorn, you're looking at, um, uh, I think you, you'd mentioned uh, also that um, uh, while we haven't necessarily skipped any steps in our evolution, that, that um, they, we've sped through a few stages um, uh, in Asia relatively yeah. quickly. What would you say would be the, the, the journey of, of e-commerce, um, uh, the e-commerce industry in Asia in, over the next few years? What does the future hold for uh, digital commerce in particularly emerging markets like um, China or India? Yeah, so uh, I think the big step forward is moving into mobile space that quickly. Okay. Uh, so rather than relying on a traditional uh, PC-based, uh, web browser-based uh, mobile e-commerce experience, I'm sorry, e-commerce experience, right. we're seeing that the, the instant move to mobile, whether it's uh, because it's more convenient, whether it can reach more uh, subscribers much quicker, um, but a lot of the times it's because there just isn't that underlying broadband infrastructure in place. So you can take Indonesia, for example, I was meeting with a bank there a, uh, a month back, and they're going to skip much of the complexity of their online banking service and move that straight to a mobile banking service because 90% of their consumers actually have a mobile device. Very few of them have the ability to uh, conduct that through a traditional PC. And, and with, um, with that added to, say, the, the leaps and bounds that mobile banking has taken off in places like India or the Philippines, would it be stretching the point too much to say that Asia could emerge as a mobile commerce leader globally? I think it already is today. If you look at the number of subscribers uh, that are uh, present in China or in India, uh, the, I think the online the statistics about the number of subscribers signing up daily or weekly in India exceeds most of the Western countries on a monthly or even a yearly basis now. So right. I think we've definitely bypassed that. 
Uh, that probably extends even if you uh, you take companies like Singtel, who have extended into the African market as well. Right. So you're seeing the Asian companies saying, well, maybe my own country doesn't have the, uh, the, the population base. Let me then extend beyond that into other global markets and offer uh, similar services through right. that mobile network. And, and Sophia, from your perspective, m mobile has been an important channel, obviously, for Groupon globally, right. but what, what, what is particular about the mobile experience in Asia and how important does that play, how, how important is that in your future expansion plans? Right, so um, as we also touched upon that earlier, in Hong Kong we have over 15 million people on mobile subscribers, so which is almost, to put it in perspective, each person has like two mobile phones. Right. So, Mobile is huge in Asia and in Hong Kong specific, uh, specifically. So, we're gonna move. Uh, we're gonna spend more of a focus educating user how to use our apps to to shop because within the app itself, it actually allows user to search deals that's based on where they're at. It's, there's some location-based features, and on top of it, they no longer have to print out the paper vouchers. They can simply scan their phone with the QR code technology. So it's just a much better shopping experience. Right, right. Sophia, Bjorn, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching. I'm Ross O'Brien with the Economist Corporate Network in Hong Kong. Have a good day.